So good evening, everyone. So we are really privileged today to have this academic CME, and we are uh, really thrilled that today is also 23rd January, uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose 126th birth anniversary. To begin the program, so may I request you all to please kindly uh, give your permission and stand up, please, for the. Ajad Hind song, which was the favorite song by Nitaji Shubhas Chandra Bosch. So may I request all to please stand up and respect the Ajad Hind National Anthem. Please start the recording. शुभ सुख चैन की बरखा बर से भारत भाग है जागा पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा चंचल सागर विंध्य हिमालय नीला से जीवन पाए हर तन पाए आशा सूरज बनकर जग पर चमके भारत नाम सुभागा सवेरे पंख पकेरु तेरे ही गुण गाए पास भरी भरपूर हवाए जीवन में रुत लाए सब मिलकर हिंद पुकारे जया सा हमारा सूरज बनकर जग पर चमके भारत नाम सुभागा जय हो जय हो जय हो जय 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 हो भारत So thank you, thank you. So may I now directly go to the today's academic event. That is today we are really fortunate to have with us Professor Shudhida Paul, Madam, who is the Vice Chancellor of the West Bengal University of Health Science as a chair. We are really fortunate to have you, Madam. Welcome you. And we also thank have you. Professor T K Mondol, sir. Who is the president of IPS Indian Pharmacological Society West Bengal chapter? We are also really fortunate to have sir with us today. And may I request now, madam and sir, to go forward with today's academic program. Good evening, everyone. 
Sure. Uh, Professor Mondol, are you there? Toponda Achen? Am I audible, Shambo? Yeah, madam, you are audible. Yes, ma yes madam, you are audible, madam. Okay. Uh, I was wondering je, uh, whether uh, Achen, Professor Mondol would. Haan. Sir Achen. Sir, ki aage bol bhi ne tu kichu. Tar otherwise, I'm so happy that after pretty long time, our society, our uh, a COVID pandemic, pandemic ke modde, amra chhe ibhabe virtually uh, meet korchi. Bebe chilla match ke amader. Hello. Uh, em, haan, sir. Uh, haan, 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 haan. Okay. So, I বলছিলাম যে আমাদের ভালো লাগছে যে অনেক দিন পরে আমরা এখন আবার নতুন করে শাম্ব দায়িত্ব নেওয়ার পরে আমরা বেশ রেগুলারলি এরকম একাডেমিক অ্যাক্টিভিটিস করছি একাডেমিক আমাদের মিট হচ্ছে আগের দিন আরএনসি স্যার এর লেকচারটা डेफिनेटলি ওয়াজ সো ভেরি ইনফরমেটিভ সো ভেরি হেল্পফুল তো আমরা এরকম আরো আরো অনেক Academic activities hobby in near future Shetami Asharakti, Buntashate, Doctor Debobroto Chando, Jini Atske, a mother speaker, Takami. Sincere thanks and gratitude. I'm expressing my thanks and gratitude towards him for putting his valuable inputs today. The topic is very, very interesting, and since uh, it is the preclinical part, the modulators in rodent models and the scope of medicinal plant molecules for cardiovascular diseases. I would request Professor Mondol to just continue with this talk before we hear from the speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Paul. Uh, at the beginning, I would welcome Dr. Devabhata Chando on behalf of IPS West Bengal branch to accept our invitation to deliver today's topic related to pharmacology teaching at the postgraduate level. So let Dr. Devabhata Chando to introduce. Dr. Devabhata Chando did his graduation and post-graduation from West Bengal University of Animal and Fishery Science. He completed his PhD under the able guidance of Dr. S.K. Misra, who is the pioneer worker in the field of molecular pharmacology using organ bath in our country. So after completion PhD, Dr. Devabhata Chando did his postdoctorate from King's College, uh, London. He was the visiting scientist at different university abroad he received several fellowships, postdoctoral fellowship, senior research fellowship, and different awards. He published more than 60 articles at international and national reputed journal. Six number of patents are in his bag, and he is the author of two or three books. So such type of scientist who is the product of West Bengal University of Animal and Fishery Science. So we are really proud of Dr. Devabhata Chando. Now I request you, Dr. Devabhata Chando, to deliver his lecture. So before starting his lecture, I will also request to say something about the institute where he is working so that our PGT and other scientists who may get chance to do some research work at this type of institute in our country. With this, I will request again to Dr. Dev Bhutta Chando to deliver. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, sir, for the nice introduction. Now, <clears throat> uh, respected uh, Surita Madam, uh, Dr. Uh, Mandal, my my beloved uh, teacher, uh, then uh, um, Dr. Sumbhu, other uh, senior members of uh, IPS West Bengal chapter, and my dear colleagues. I, um, <coughs> it is, uh, you know, I feel uh, privileged and honored 
for getting uh, uh, for getting um, such a sc um, scope on on this auspicious occasions of 126th birth anniversary of our <coughs> esteemed and uh, of our great personalities uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Really, I, I feel really honored to uh, you know to share uh, our uh, to share our observations and experiences with medicinal and aromatic plant compounds with this uh, uh, galaxy of you know um, galaxy of uh, great great personalities in the area of pharmacology and toxicology. So, Shambhav, should I go for sharing screen? Yes, please, please. Is it in the you know main uh, that uh, presentation mode? Yeah, yeah, it is full screen. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, uh, I am working uh, you know in the uh, uh, as a principal scientist uh, in the bioprospection and product development division of CSIR Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants. Many of uh, I think uh, of the audience will be aware about. Uh, you know, CSIR, that is nothing but the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. It is a, you know, apex organization uh, under the Ministry of Science and Technology, which has been conceived uh, long before independence in the, in, in our very own city, uh, Kolkata. And then uh, several laboratories has been nationalized. And, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Santi Saru uh, you know, conceptualized this CSIR in 1945. And presently we have 38 laboratories across the length and breadth of the country. And this uh, particular institute, CSIR CMAP, we, uh, we, you know, we popularly abbreviate it, it is working since 1959, you know. And uh, the very own purpose was to work on our traditional knowledge, you know, uh, what has been lost during the, you know, uh, period of, you know, between, uh, foreign rules and all other issues. So the primary idea was to to have the gatherings of the traditional knowledge and especially in the area of medicinal and aromatic plants. This institute um, usually works on medicinal plants and they give the, you know, uh, the molecules and the, uh, what can I say, uh, intellectual property and collaborates with other prestigious institutes like CDRI and for the drug discovery and development. So I, I just want to one or two examples uh, to share the success stories and the significant contribution of this institute. As you are, uh, many of you know that after, after chloroquine for managing the drug resistant malaria, it was the artemisinin based drug. You know, email, email is a, you know, uh, is a arti ether basically. And it was, uh, you know, the compound was isolated from artemisia annua, which was, you know, domesticated in Indian conditions. It is improved. And the drug has been developed in combination, uh, in collaboration with CDRI. And uh, even today, uh, for managing the drug resistant malaria, the artemisinin based drug is the only solution. So, our institute has made this single most important contributions. And there are many stories. You know, uh, I can tell you another example you know, menthol mint. Menthol mint is a, is a uh, you know, this uh, mint crystals is used in cup syrups and many pharma, pharmaceutical applications. So this institute made India from menthol importing countries into the largest menthol exporting countries, you know, and it is the leader in, uh, you know, the present central government, uh, um, you know, started the uh, project called Aroma Mission for in income enhancement and other things uh, by different parts of the country uh, to, to face with, you know, global, uh, this uh, um, uh, climate changes and other things because these plants are very robust. Our institute have agriculture, chemistry, and biology. The chemist people they isolate you know different uh, type of compounds um, you know with the aim of having potential biological activity. The institute works in the area of malaria, cancer, infectious diseases, cardiovascular, diabetes, etc. You know one of the important product uh, very recently launched two three years back, BGR thirty four. This, it was also developed in our institute also have a very important share into this and, and there are other things. So with this background information, now the uh, topic of the presentation is evaluation of potassium and calcium channel modulators in uh, rodent models, scope for, uh, uh, scope for uh, medicinal plant compounds for cardiovascular disease, you know. Now I'm going to the next slide.
so it is not moving sambhav you can click on the just uh, left hand side of the okay, slide okay. okay thank you thank you so uh, no. so th this is this is the you know overall presentation cardiovascular disease uh, I, i know almost all the audience is very much aware just before coming into the our observations i'll touch upon very brief okay so now coming to the cardiovascular disease it is yeah okay <coughs> CVDs are the number one cause of death globally, and estimated 17.7 people uh, million people died in 2015. Over three quarter of CVD uh, CVD death, you know, take place in low and middle income countries, and uh, you know the number of people uh, who die from CVD was expected to reach 23.3 million by 2030. But sorry, the you know this arrival of the COVID uh, COVID pandemic has jeopardized all our calculations and future projections. and i and and experts speculates this situation will be much more alarming and you know this all the figures will be at much higher uh, figures in the coming time because of the pathology of this uh, deadly virus associated with the cardiovascular you know cardiovascular system um, okay so if you if you see this slide some of i don't know why it is not moving no i think you have to click on the right side uh, or your left side you can find there is some arrow so you have to click on the next button i'm doing that no 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 your next uh, the the lower left corner you just put your cursor so it becomes unshared hello so oh, yeah yeah i'm just sharing start doing sharing so then going to the presentation mode right it is not sharing yeah so you just click on the next slide that means the arrow that is arrow i am not able to see that is that, that is the problem i am not able to see it. in your from your laptop you can click on that next arrow yeah. ah, okay is it is it happening now yeah, yeah. it is changing okay so uh, sorry for the you know interruptions now if you look at this uh, map you know the cardiovascular disease uh, prevalence in everywhere and as as i as you discussed this uh, covid pandemic has jeopardized all the calculations and so this situation is going to be much more worse if you look at this uh, image i just uh, you know incorporated this slide yesterday you can see the you know the diagnostic and other procedures you know cardiovascular disease patients they need routine monitoring follow up diagnosis etc all things are getting hampered and so naturally the you know uh, there will be more damage that the there will be more severe outcome for this so uh, so uh, you know we need much more better strategy to to address these issues now <coughs> and channels calcium and potassium channels they are very important targets and their regulation is very important in the physiology and the pathophysiology of cardiovascular disease as we oh, you all are aware of it yeah iron channels are pore forming membrane proteins whose function is establishing arresting membrane potential shaping action potential and other electric signals by getting the flow of ions across the cell membrane controlling the flow of ions across the membrane and regulating cell volumes they are often described as narrow water filled tunnels that only accept specific type of ions so this is the kind of a selective permeability and since the discovery of ion channels and and the you know their physiology and the study of their physiology leads to that many diseases can be traced back to the channel pathies and you know the mechanisms for many toxins and many many other things could be explained where the and had the modulation of ion channel functions plays important role and even this uh, this um, you know elucidations of these uh, or their important role helped the pharmaceutical industry to design uh, you know to to have the designer molecules uh, for 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 this drug target okay so yeah, this is what is happening if i move this they are not allowing me to in the slide 
some of i'm just doing one one more time i don't know why it is not helping you have to share i am doing that repeatedly okay so i i will bother that upper panel i think that is that is creating problem yeah so now uh, this uh, you know in ideally they have the three important parts the voltage sensor the the you know this uh, poor conducting pathways and the selective filters voltage uh, since uh, our observations are associated with the voltage gated channels so i I'll, I'll be focusing on that and uh, you know before coming to the our methodology and data just uh, just uh, two three slides i want to share over here uh, just for, for a very quick revisit voltage gated ion channels possess alpha subunits with axillary beta subunits you know the poor forming alpha subunit is sufficient for the functional expression but the kinetics and the voltage dependence of channel gating are modified by the beta subunit so if you look at alpha subunits are organized in four homologous domain 1 to 4 each with six transmembrane alpha helix and so that's really it will be 24 actually these are flattened so they are they are basically they are in the aggregate form and you know uh, this s4 is generally the voltage sensor and this 5 and 6 they form the core of the core of the you know uh, the the channel okay now if you look at the voltage de uh, dependent calcium channels they mediate the calcium influx in response to membrane depolarization and regulate intracellular process such as contraction secretion neurotransmission etc the alpha on subunit of voltage gated calcium channels is organized again in the you know, same fashion with the uh, or homologous domain with six uh, transmembrane uh, you know uh, transmembrane uh, alpha helix Uh, 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 an intracellular beta subunit and a transmembrane disulfide linked beta to uh, alpha to beta is also there so voltage sensitive calcium channels are responsible for excitation contraction coupling of skeletal smooth and cardiac muscles and also for hormone secretions now if you look at the potassium channels they are much more abundant and highly diverse class of ion channels membrane spanning proteins allows you know they are membrane spanning uh, spanning protein they allow a flux of potassium ions Uh, through potassium selective pore because you know the intracellular environment is always high in potassium whereas the you know calcium channels they actually he help entry of calcium from the extracellular medium inside the cell so uh, they are regulated by the function function of the potassium uh, you know the opening the getting is regulated by voltage calcium or neurotransmitters important role is their important role is cellular you know, repolarization cellular and cardiac repolarization through pass of relaxation neurotransmitter insulin release and so on now uh, you know they can be calcium activated you know the ma the major major subtypes are calcium activated potassium channels inward rectifying channels tandem poor dominated potassium channel voltage gated potassium channels uh, since uh, many of the literatures and our observations found that calcium activated potassium channels they are you know uh, they are the primary targets for many phytomolecules uh, 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 and the uh, the molecules we worked uh, many uh, two three of them have the you know this calcium activated potassium channels actually they starts you know when there is a suppose a muscle gets contracted so nat naturally there will be high rise in intracellular calcium now to again re establish the you know resting membrane potential or the to repolarize so uh, you know there uh, there need to be some pathways so there this calcium activated potassium channels they they play play a very important role there are three and uh, they are called sometimes they are also called the pk channels okay so there there can be three type of um, bk channels large conductance bk channels they they usually operates at 100 to 300 pico siemens intermediate conducted channels Uh, 20 to 100 uh, you know pico siemens and the small small conductance uh, calcium um, calcium activated potassium channels okay so uh, they have uh, two uh, you know uh, two um, basically two subunits that's uh, beta and alpha beta uh, beta is uh, either beta 1 or beta 4 and this having two transmembrane um, transmembrane alpha helix whereas in the alpha there are 11 transmembrane alpha helix and uh, they, they, these are present in the cytoplasmic membrane and these are the you know, intracellular part and this is the this you know s4 is the voltage sensor s5 and 6 they basically helps in the forming the pore and it looks like this okay four alpha four alpha subunit and four beta subunits so uh, now <clears throat> uh, 
when the you know when the, there is rise in calcium so there is a, you know the uh, or or you know accumulation of intracellular cyclic gmp they actually activate this channel once the channel is open so they causes the efflux of potassium so naturally when there is a flux of potassium the membrane be, uh, the membrane become hyperpolarized and so this leads to the blockage of the you know can um, voltage dependent calcium channel so the calcium entry is reduced intracellular calcium uh, you know level um, drops significantly and this leads to the smooth muscle relaxation okay so the, um, this is uh, briefly uh, this um, what is there and uh, then, then that will you know will take up in the expansion now coming to the another important part medicinal plants as a source of drug i just want to spend one or two minutes on this slide yeah because many of uh, us uh, may be not much aware why plants has been you know we one uh, point comes to mind to everyone why plant has been the source of drug even today more than 70% of the drug that has been used for the treatment either in the medical medical profession or even in veterinary profession they have the you know root uh, to the plant source why plant has been the source of drug many works has been done and the very interesting part is that you know by the process of evolution all the or the animals or the mammalians or, or the you know um, uh, other than uh, living creatures other than plant they are blessed with the you know locomotion we can avoid but the plant cannot they are always under the stress of both abiotic factors like heat cold and animal and biotic stress biotic stress like draft salinity heavy metal microbial infections uh, you know uh, you know different type of toxins etc etc so the helpless plant cannot move it has to bear very you know very scorching sunlight heavy rain heat salinity drought what not so how it will survive them nature has gifted them with uh, you know very unique metabolic machinery that is that is we call the secondary metabolic pathways you know we have primary metabolism like carbohydrate protein metabolism uh, nucleotide uh, nucleic acid metabolism what we do have and that helps the day to day maintenance and the build up and other activities we all are aware in addition to this plant have the additional mechanism that is called the secondary metabolism actually these secondary metabolism uh, metabolic pathways and the battery of enzymes they help them to produce to synthesize different inter important molecules and they help them in getting you know overcoming the stress suppose bacterial infection is there so instead of we we can um, move away we can remove bacteria the plant cannot the helpless plant cannot but it can synthesize the anti antimicrobial compounds that helps the plant to fight with the organisms so this is why plant has been the source of drug for human kind from the early dawn of civilization and and you can see the drugs like terpenes phenolics nicotinic compounds sulfur sulfur containing compounds so they have been the array of compounds which helps human kind for you know for having several pharmacophores to you know to struggle with the many kind of diseases so this is how plant is contributing now if you see uh, you know just a few couple of examples uh, uh, this uh, there are uh, you know these uh, uh, bk channels and the uh, bdcc and l type uh, voltage dependent calcium channels which uh, will be focusing in the presentations many plants have uh, you know compounds which are uh, working through these targets like you know this uh, allium sativum you know allium garlic and then andrographis paniculata uh, and many plants okay so they have compounds and uh, compounds are there which which you know, in addition to the other targets uh, you know ion channels also play important role okay now uh, let us come to our uh, what we have done, what have been done um, in our laboratory so far in the area of medicinal and aromatic plant compounds focusing on these two ion channels we have many other activities but here i, I am showing this this two uh, you know uh, molecules showing biological activity uh, using these two targets okay so we have uh, we have uh, you know just uh, before going uh, into data uh, uh, let, let me share uh, the infrastructure we have you know animals uh, uh, okay so uh, uh, you know this is this is the ex vivo system you i think uh, almost all of you uh, you are aware this is a classical you know uh, uh, we use karm chymographs is a modern generation organ path so you can have the aorta or other uh, bigger arterial preparations where you can study this uh, you know isolated tissue function you can study the contraction endothelial function you can screen the compound you can study the mechanism now for finer blood vessels we use myograph 
I think this uh, facility is not much there uh, in many places. Here, you can study very fine blood vessels. Even the middle cerebral artery of mice can be studied. Okay, can you imagine? And very, very fine. You, you can see the dimensions of the tissue. Very, very fine tissue that can be studied. And you have to uh, use the you know, microscope. So this is uh, made. Uh, this uh, equipment is uh, you know from Danish Myotechnology. Okay, uh, so uh, these are the ex uh, facilities for the ex vivo studies. And then for you know the one of the major area is um, hypertension. So we do the ex vivo study, we isolate the, you know, we identify the molecule, and then we need to study in the animal models. We have, you know, chemical model that is a, a, a LNM, l arginine. So basically uh, the inhibitors of nitric oxide synthesis, the, the chemical induced model. We have spontaneous, you know, genetically developed spontaneously hypertensive rat models for studying the antihypertensive activity of medicinal plant compounds. And then uh, during the, you know, uh, process of experiments, we measure, uh, the blood pressure using both invasive and non-invasive techniques. Invasive techniques are very classical and many of us, uh, you know, aware of it. But the problem is that although it is a gold standard for measuring the blood pressure, you know, destructive methods. You can measure the blood, uh, you know, after the surgical procedure. So you cannot uh, have the, you know, um, hemodynamic parameters of the animal during the course of the experiment. So in that case, you have to use the non-invasive techniques. You know, the simple, just, uh, you know, measuring the blood pressure in human being. This is a tail cup method. There is the inflation, deflation techniques. So it is a pulse, okay, this is the pulse wave. So, the, you know, if you inflate, the pulse will go. And if you deflate, the pulse will again reappear and you have to measure. Uh, what what has been uh, generally the practice in human being? Okay, this is there. So this is the in vivo measurements. We also have ECG, broadened ECG. Now, uh, in uh, then for studying the mechanism of action, you know, many times you need to measure what are the second messengers. Okay, because that helps you to identify the pathways. So uh, you know, ELISA techniques are available everywhere. You can do cyclic GMP, cyclic AMP, ELISA uh, for elucidating the mechanism of action of any phytomolecule molecules. And then, uh, you know, many times you need to study this, uh, you know, in uh, smooth muscle cells. Okay, we have uh, in vitro facilities and we do the primary culture of aortic smooth muscle cells, mesenteric artery smooth muscle cells, pulmonary artery smooth muscle cells. And, you know, uh, they are characterized, uh, the um, typical nature of the cells has been characterized with the immunostaining and confocal imaging. You know, this is for nucleus, smooth muscle alpha actin, F actin. Okay, so you, you, you can do, and they are generally being used for, uh, you know, for studying the ion channel function assay. Um, we also have optimized and studied some work on the endothelial cells. We can do, uh, we have got a training, uh, fortunate enough to have a training on the primary endothelial cells using bovine aortic endothelial cells. But, you know, because of the cow slaughter ban and other issues, we don't get tissue, even not the buffalo tissue study so and uh, you know there is a lot of regulations and uh, you know, health concerns so we, we we cannot make use of you know uh, uh, uvac human umbilical vein um, endothelial cells so that that is not possible okay we'll be waiting in future if there is a scope we'll study the endothelial cells yeah now in addition and then these cells uh, after characterization they are being used for the ion channel function assay we use helium based assay you know uh, earlier, it was not possible without patch clump facilities to study the ion channel function. But nowadays, because of the fluorescence heat available, you know, at, the, at least, uh, uh, you know, you can move a significant amount of progress. So uh, that, that will actually uh, minimize the workload and challenges uh, for patch clumping. At least we will be reaching to some extent. We do not have patch clump, but we do study these things, you know. Uh, in the, you know, in, for studying the potassium channel function assay, we use the, you know, uh, thallium based assay. That's actually thallium ion. They actually take the potassium channel root and to make uh, make its uh, you know entry into inside the cell and then it flows. Okay, so this is how we do it. And for calcium, the non washed based uh, fluorophore uh, kit they helps uh, you know uh, the calcium imaging and helps uh, compound finding whether it is calcium channel blocking, calcium channel opening, or or so. Okay, so this is the basic infrastructure we have. Now with this, let me start. Uh, with the observations we made with some phytomolecules. I have, I'm sharing here, I, I think three or four molecules that we have. Now with this, I'm coming to neolignans, you know. Neolignans, they are very, uh, you know, one of the most important class of plant secondary metabolites. Uh, you know, non-steroidal plant secondary metabolites, they are synthesized through sikimic acid via phenyl propanoid pathway. They are known for many activities, antiviral, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory, anti-malarial, and so on, but not being well explored for, you know, cardiovascular activities, anti-hypertensive activities, etc. The first report 
for the cardiovascular potential of this class of compounds appeared in 2008. And then we picked up and we came up with uh, some you know, interesting uh, biological activity and hypertensive activity. And now our chemist colleagues are working on it for development of further molecules and also in collaboration with CSR, CDRI. Now, uh, coming to this uh, observation with new lignin one, what has been done so far? You know, I just uh, I, I'll, I'll say before uh, explaining the data, I'm just uh, explaining this these two tracings. Many of you might be here, but uh, for the non, uh, for the, you know just uh, brief revisit. You know, for doing any experiments in organ bath, you need to check. You know, suppose you have a you know a dissect animal, you got the heota, you cleaned in you know ice cream. Uh, physiological cell saline, and then you mounted the tissue. So before doing any experiments, you need to check if the tissue is viable or not. In that case, we use. So am I audible, my dear friends? Yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah. We can. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you need to induce contractions using any spasmogens or agonists. Here we have used phenylephrine. Okay, so when once you get the contractions. Um, pretty, you know, you know, pretty, um, you know, amplitude of contractions then you will consider, okay, I'm happy with the contrast, so that is which fine. Now, you know, in blood vessels, so the endothelium is also a very important component. You have to know whether endothelium, functional endothelium is there or not, because many, you know, many compounds or many stuff, pharmacological stuff, they produce their relaxation and response through endothelium. So this is a very important component and you have to know it. Now, in, uh, in a pre-constricted arterial rings, if you add acetylcholine, Acetylcholine, you know, important neurotransmitter, but at the same time, it is, a, it is a one of the most important endogenous vasorelaxant. Acetylcholine, they basically act on the M2 receptor, muscarinic receptor 2 in the endothelial cells, and then it activates the ENOSH, okay, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. And through the deamination of LA arginine, that there is a production of nitric oxide. That nitric oxide then diffuses to the adjacent smooth muscle cells. Because you know, out, out the rings, the endothelial cells and the smooth muscle cells, they are very, they are in a very close opposition. And then this diffused nitric oxide then activates the soluble guanine cyclic in the smooth muscles. Then there is a buildup of cyclic GMP and the rest of the story, I think almost everyone knows. Now, so it produces a very fast relaxation. Now, you need to study any phytomolecules both in the presence and absence of endothelium, so that you can conclude whether endothelium is playing any role in the relaxation mechanism of the compound or not. So this has been, you can achieve by the mechanical removal of the endothelium, but at the same time, you have to prove functionally that at this, you know, see the same acetylcholine is not able to produce relaxation. Actually, it is mechanically denuded. So this, this tracing confirms that this particular aortic preparation is devoid of functional endothelium. Now, the tissue is ready for your experiment. So if you add the drug cumulatively, cumulative concentration response, you can have the sigma and carb. Now, this endothelium intact and denuded carb, you know, if you compare, it can it is very clearly visible that endothelium is not playing any, any role in the relaxation mechanism. So there can be other, other, other pathways uh, may be responsible. Now, so in a relaxation phenomenon, you know, G kinase pathways may be there. There can be opening of potassium channels. There can be blocking of calcium channels and so on. So you have to compartmentalize one after another. Now, this uh, ODQ experiment, you know, ODQ is a soluble guanyl cyclase blocker, selective soluble guanyl cyclase blocker. So, you know, if you block the soluble guanyl cyclase, so there will not be any synthesis of, you know, uh, um, cyclic GMP. So, relaxation will be blocked. Now, you can see this from this car and these tracings that the pre incubation of the outing rings with ODQ significantly, although partially, but significantly block the relaxation response. So naturally, we, we can speculate that the compound neolignin one produces relaxation through accumulation of cyclic GMP. We do not know whether it is stimulating the soluble guanyl cyclase or it is blocking the breakdown of cyclic GMP, as has been observed with the papaverin and other compounds. You know, the caffeine, uh, you know, they, they, they actually inhibit the degradation of cyclic GMP. So that leads even sildenafil. They, uh, you know, uh, sildenafil is a known uh, specific, uh, you know, blocker of, so, so, you know, uh, cyclic GMP degrading PD5, phosphodiesterase 5. So if you do that, then there will be accumulation of cyclic GMP and there will be relaxation. So you wanted to explore. And for that, we measured cyclic GMP level. You can see new lignin at different concentration producing, you know, accumulation of cyclic GMP. But when you used it in combination with sildenafil, there is 26.66 fold rise in intracellular cyclic GMP. Means your compound is stimulating, we hypothesized, and we proved it also through our other observations. So in one way, this compound is stimulating the soluble guanine cyclase, 
And when it is used in combination with sildenafil, which is actually blocking the breakdown, so there is accumulation, 26-fold uh, accumulation. So this clearly proves that our compound is an active hitter of soluble guanine cytase. Okay, now, again, th this is also another important slide. You now, just how can you start whether potassium channel has any role in the relaxation mechanism of your compounds, okay, when you are interested to study the relaxation or the antihypertensive activity, any phytomolecules. Okay, so this is uh, this is the protocol how you can use it. Okay, once you are happy with the tissue is functional or endothelium is everything is there, then you have to do the experiments with height, you know. Uh, you know, uh, this is a, we call, you know, normally in a physiological saline solution, the potassium concentration is around 4.6 millimolar. Now, if you increase the potassium, you could destabilize, or if you increase, you know, they are isotonic. Surely they are isotonic. If you increase the concentration of potassium in the extracellular medium to 60 millimolar, 40 millimolar, we generally use 60 millimolar because you get a very decent contractions and you, you can go even up to 80 millimolar. That means you are destabilizing the potassium gradient. You know, as you, as you as I told earlier slide, that intracellular medium is always high in potassium. So if you increase the extracellular potassium, that means there is no scope for potassium channel to open and work. Okay, so if you have a molecule that produces relaxation through opening of potassium channel, that will not be able to elicit its response. But if you see in case of neolignin, the relaxation is there. That means in outer, the molecule is producing relaxation not through potassium channel. Okay, this is, you know, this, this carbs, this, this type of tracing is showing that. Now, this is this is the tracing which is showing that, you know, we, we call titration curves. Means whether ODQ 10 micromole is sufficient to block the G kinase pathway or not. You can see it completely blocks the SNP response. Okay. And without ODQ, it, it is relaxation, concentration dependent relaxation is also there. Now, Okay, so the neolignin, as I shown, as I have shown you, that that you know, so G kinase pathway has some some role, uh, you know, significant uh, but partial role in the relaxation. Then how the compound is producing such a wonderful relaxation and complete reversal? So we need to explore other pathways. Here we found the role of you know voltage dependent calcium channels and you know smooth muscles, the L-type voltage dependent calcium channels play, play a predominant role. Now this 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 protocol is very important to understand. Now let me explain. It. Okay, so I'm, I'm just, you know, due to the paucity of time, I have limited uh, my slides and I'm not showing those traces. Here, you know, uh, actually in the isolated experiment, you have to be very happy with the, you know, uh, flow of the things like equilibration, testing whether the tissue is functional or not, endothelium is there or not. So once you are happy with these things, you know, you have to, uh, then you can start your calcium protocol. You know, this particular experiment take more than eight hours. To, to the do the study. Okay. Now, uh, first, uh, you know that uh, physiologically functional tissue, you have to make it nominally calcium free. Means the buffer, you know, uh, like a Krebs and saline solution in the extracellular medium, you have to make it free from calcium. And then still there are there may be calcium which may be loosely bound to the cell membrane. So you can use EGTA or other calcium chelating agents and then remove the calcium. After this, if you expose the tissue to depolarizing solution, you know, calcium free high key. Calcium is not there, but because of the high potassium concentration, the cells, the tissue gets depolarized. But as the extracellular medium, you know, calcium, for calcium, we, we the cell is very much dependent on the extracellular source. All those sarcoplasm and reticulum is also, but, you know, most for, for you know, having uh, proper contractions, they need extracellular cell. Now, you see, the tissue wants calcium, but it is not there. Only due to the depolarization, there is some sequestration from sarcoplasmic reticulum, so you can get a tiny contraction. Now, if you in these conditions, the tissue is tissue is depolarized, it wants calcium to contract. Now, in this scenario, if you reintroduce extracellular calcium, you know, you just add on calcium in the extracellular medium, you can get a dose-dependent contraction. Okay, this is being exploited for studying the you know role of your compound in the functional behavior of calcium channel in the you know vascular, you know this aortic preparations. And the pre-incubation with different modulators, even, you know, this, we have used nifedipine and our compound, you know, if you just pre-incubate for 10, uh, some, some time, you can get significant uh, reduction in the contraction response. This is how you can study the contribution of, you know, calcium channels in the isolated tissue preparations. So the, the data is there. Now, once we are happy with uh, aorta, we then move to the mesentery artery. Now, question is, why mesentery artery? You know, our you know in our, in our circulatory system, we have conduit vessels or the accommodating. You know, conduit vessels means they accommodate the major volume of blood that actually circulates, and then there is a resistance vessels. 
you know mesenteric vascular bed is the major res resistance bed you know because if the if the lumen of the mesenteric bed they resist the flow of blood that is the maximum resistance and there will be naturally rise in blood pressure so in that case if your molecule can relax the mesenteric artery mm -hmm. uh, some of am i fast or is it fine dr sambhu yeah i think it's okay sir Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, so you need to relax. Now, if your compound is producing relaxation in mesenteric bed, uh, mesenteric bed, so that will be a very good piece of information and you can plan for the further experiment. So you can see this, this compound again producing endothelium independent relaxation in the mesenteric vascular bed. And then we have elucidated different mechanisms. Here, you can see in presence of high potassium concentration, the compound fails to produce good amount of relaxation. And when you use the different sub, you know, different, uh, different, you know, subtype blockers, like, you know, tetraethyl ammonia, that is actually BK channel blockers. Okay. We have used also 4 aminopyridine and which is KV channel blockers, and then glamine clomide, KATP channel blockers, barium chloride, inner blockers of the inner rectifying. So here we found TEA is important in blocking. So you see how interesting these observations are. The same molecule, when producing relaxation in the aorta, they, you know, there is no role of potassium channels. But here, they, this, the same is playing very important role. So once we have we have done this, we then move for the, you know, uh, this docking and QSR with help of our, you know, uh, in silico colleagues, um, guys, computational biology background. So we do that docking, you know, uh, the SGC, this one with the SGC, then VDCC, then BK channels, etc. And then we move to the evaluation in the in vivo model. This is in SHRs. And a spontaneously hypertensive rats, you know, they are being developed through selective blocking, uh, you know, breeding of which the rats, you know, which was Okamoto and co workers in 1964. They actually developed this model, and the animal is hypertensive since from the you know two to three weeks of uh, age, uh, the rat, and the very uh, high blood pressure is there, you know, more than 180 or something in the systolic blood pressure, and uh, diastolic is also pretty high, 140 mmHg. And so our compound produces significant relaxation. This, this is measured through uh, non-invasive technique, tail cup method. And then in also invasive uh, pressure is there. I'm not sharing all other data, but you know, this is in SHR models, this is in LDAM models, and all these observations are published in, uh, you know, um, published. And, and or even we carried out the uh, toxicity profile, pharmacokinetic profile of the molecules. Okay, now coming to the next molecule. <clears throat> I think uh, many of uh, us may be aware of this, uh, you know, plant. This is called Justimodu, Glyceraja glabra, or uh, popularly in English called licorice. Now, uh, you know, licorice is known for cardiorespiratory, you know, diseases. Even uh, in our day-to-day -day practice, we even in our childhood time, we use Justimodu for, you know, cough and other things. Now, uh, and and you know, in the Western countries, even in Germany, the Glyceraja glabra or licorice is being prescribed for many, uh, many, many kind of ailments, even in, you know, this uh, Korean countries or China, they have a very important role uh, for management of, you know, cardiovascular cardio ailments in the traditional practice. So we wanted to know whether this important plant have, you know, the, at least the molecules, uh, you know, one of the major molecules, this, uh, you know, molecules uh, present in these plants uh, with very important biological role like glabridine, isolicrutogenine, licrutogenine, uh, and uh, glycerogen, glycetinic acids, and other things are there. Here, uh, we actually, uh, we just uh, tried whether glabridine, you know, the plant is known for cardiovascular potentials, whether any marker molecules from this plant has some biological activity or not. So this is the work uh, with glabridine, you know, and we found that glabridine is a uh, relaxant in the, mesenteric artery, in the mesenteric artery, and again, we found the role of uh, you know, BK channels. Okay. So again, the similar kind of experiments, what I have been shown in uh, new lignan case. I just wanted to share here that, uh, please have a look in this slide. Here, you know, this, this single uh, slide can uh, you know, explain very nicely. Though uh, here we have used the IBMX. IBMX, you know, is a non-specific blocker of you know, phosphoric stress. It can block the phosphoric stress responsible for CMP degradation as well as the phosphoric stress responsible for CGMP degradation. So when the tissue is pre-incubated to IBMX, glabridine is, you know, glabridine is, you know, uh, not able to produce relaxation, but the tissue is fine. And the cyclic GMP measurement, you know, you can see that the combination of glabridine with IBMX uh, produces all the, you know, the, you, you, you do not have further increase in the glabridine level as has been observed in 
in case of your new lignin. So this suggests that, that their target is same. And our in silico docking and other, you know, even phosphodiesterase assay showed that glabridin is basically a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. And this is, this is how it produces cyclic GMP accumulation. And, you know, the, the, uh, the opening of the BK channels, you know, the, the BK channel, the relaxation response by glabridin through BK channels, uh, you know, it is secondary to cyclic GMP accumulation. So uh, it suggests that glabridin produces relaxation of the mesentery, uh, mesentery artery in rod and model through cyclic GMP accumulation. And once the cyclic GMP accumulation is there, it leads to the activation and opening of BK channels. Okay, so the, this was the story with glabridin. Now coming to the, uh, and some docking and other strategies, these are with glabridin. Now, uh, you know, this, uh, I'm coming to this novel plant family. Okay, so although I, we, we, you know, we start with the coded compounds and you'll be happy to know that they are Benjamin agents, you know, uh, I think you all are aware and many of our, many of our uh, dear clinicians might be using candy certain, tell me certain, agile certain and many certains. Certains are very popular because they are the antihypertensive drug present day, very, very, you know, very important use all throughout the globe because they're very safe. And you know, very uh, no, you know, and uh, their side effects are much much minimal when you compare with the other standard. Now, this compound, uh, what we have come out is a, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, um, <coughs> this APD actually. Uh, this is a, you know, um, benzimidazole compounds, and this is a very structural similarity with those compounds, and and you know, uh, further pharmacophore can be designed. So I'm just sharing our observations with this, you know. This, uh, this you know, when you screen the series of molecules, they produce wonderful relaxation response. So initially, we have the battery of compounds. We study the relaxation. We then study the mode of action, and then in wave evolution. Okay. So again, the same story. Okay, endothelium uh, independent, dependent, and then different potassium channels. Okay. So our experiments with high K tetraethyl ammonium and a more specific blocker, ibiridoxine concluded that this, you know, this BK channel is also important target for this molecule. And then, you know, uh, in case of BK channels, so, so is there any role of, you know, cyclic GMP accumulation? Yes, there is cyclic GMP accumulations. Okay, so again, it is it is corroborating the, you know, observations with the glabridine or the neolignin. Okay, now again, in addition to the, you know, uh, BK channels, calcium channel is also important role. Now, you know, you might be wondering, why the medicinal plant compounds, even I am showing, or you might be knowing, they have multivalent activities. Why? Actually, the co coexistence of human and uh, you know plant populations uh, in the environment for quite a period of time actually made them more accommodative. That is why as uh, synthetic molecules, they may have focused or a single biological activity, but a plant compounds in many times it has been found they are with diverse biological activity. And even in our case, you can, as you can see, one single molecule, they may be in the, you know, potassium channels, calcium channels, cyclic GMP and so on. Okay, so it's showing the calcium channel blocking activity. In this case, we have further evaluated using Bay. You know, Bay K eight six four four is a known opener of uh, L type BDCC, and the Bay response is agonist. So it is showing you know this blocking of calcium response as well as Bay response suggests that this uh, FPD, you know, um, they they uh, this molecule is taking this you know is in, uh, producing relaxation through blocking of the uh, calcium channels. Okay, now after that, now I am showing some data on the in vitro assay. How, how we have done the you know end channel function as in the cells in the smooth muscle cells i think uh, this characterization i have already described now <clears throat> you see this uh, you know potassium channel function assay okay now uh, okay this uh, thallium based assay you know uh, you, you have to culture the cells and then in 96 well plate in each well you should have at least 30 to 40 thousands of cells and then they should be confluent and they should be happy. And then you have to use the kit. Okay, in the kit, there is a fluorescent dye. Actually, it will be uptake. And you know, using any kind of you know this modern day uh, you know so, um, um, spectrophotometer uh, like I3 you have used. So it can measure fluorescence, uh, absorbance, luminescence, everything. Okay, so now you have cells. They are with dye. They are uploaded with dye. And now we have added thallium. That is there in the extracellular medium. You know, in normal case, potassium, some potassium channels will be open. So dye is getting entry and there will be some fluorescence. In presence of TEA, you know, TEA is a blocker of particular BK channel. So you, you have diminished fluorescence, but seeing in your rectifiers and others will be there. So there will be some fluorescence. Okay. But if you look at KCL, potassium chloride 80 millimolar, as we have told earlier also, 
that you know lead, lead to near blockade of potassium channels. You can see the fluorescence almost diminished. Now you see with our compound concentration dependently at 10 micromol there is a very very interesting fluorescence and at 30 micromol these cells are almost burst with the fluorescence. So this corroborates very significantly with our XBO observations that APD produces relaxation through opening of decay channels. Now, coming to the calcium fluorescence. Okay, so you need to open the potassium channels, and whereas you need to block the calcium channel to have a wonderful relaxation. Now, you can see nor 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 you know, they are known for, uh, you know, um, uh, through this uh, um, protein kinase C pathways to induce intracellular calcium. You can see here. So, uh, when the, you know, APD uh, is used, uh, you know, uh, with nor nor the reduction in calcium fluorescence. You can see here. And this was also verified with our Bay, Bay experiment. Okay, so Bay can uh, Bay, Bay induced. You know, Bay is a known opener of calcium channels. So Bay response is also abolished. Like in organ bath, the calcium fluorescence has also been abolished. So this is the time you know uh, time based uh, car we can have this for calcium imaging. Okay, this all has been done in the confocal microscope. And now, so once we are happy with this, we went for the in vivo evaluation, both in LM and SHRs. Uh, as I, I, I earlier, I have shown the single, you know, column because they were the, uh, you know, what is called that uh, invasive technique. So you anesthetize animal, get the data. So you, you cannot monitor. But in non-invasive technique, you can monitor. Here you can see, you know, uh, in the LM experiments, you need to give LM at 50 mg per kg in drinking water for chronic, chronic period. You know, LM is a uh, nitric oxide synthase inhibitor. So when there is chronic inhibition of nitric oxide synthase, so there, you know, there will be gradual buildup of pressure. Like you can see this systolic, diastolic, mean arterial pressure. Okay, so now if you start your treatment at around four weeks after the beginning of the experiment, so there will be gradual decline. So uh, here we have used minoxidil enalapril because minoxidil was used because it is a potassium channel, you know, opener. So it, although it has some other applications, but you know we have data with candy certain telling I am not sure sharing here. Okay. So this produces antihypertensive activity uh, as has been measured that in that even in invasive uh, techniques and then in SHRs. Okay. So all the data are there. Once we are happy and then we move to the, okay, say uh, the tissue is producing, the compound is producing relaxation, compound is showing antihypertensive activity. What is happening to the targets and genes and expressions? So we have even studied the expression of different targets like ENOS, INOS, SGC, protein kinase G, and then host of other things, you know, like, uh, mm, okay, so, uh, uh, BK channels, ATR1, they are, I don't, I'm not able to see it. Okay, um, calcium channels and then um, calcium calmodulin kinase, TRP6, okay. Even, you know, in case of uh, LM treatment, because of this chronic inflammation and eno, eno, uh, um, suppression of enosynthesis, there is, uh, you know, vascular remodeling. The thickness is there. Okay, that is also being uh, taken care of the, by the compound. Okay, so this, all these observations and recent we have published in Frontiers in Pharmacology in 2021. So APD, the, you know, um, this compound, um, fluorophenyl benzene actually it inhibits calcium, opening the potassium channels, having, uh, helping in the cyclic GMP buildup and the vasoplastics, and then uh, produces the other responses. Now, okay, so till the, uh, to this, uh, you know, I have uh, shown you the data for the, you know, uh, we, the target was the, to produce a relaxation because it has an implication in hypertensity. But you know, for phytomolecules, you, you don't uh, always look for the relaxation. If, if the compound produces contraction, there is also scope for that. And, and in that case, we have you know, used those molecules against vascular hyperreactivity. You know, vascular mm -hmm. hyperreactivity is a condition where the tissue do not respond to the standard spasmogens or contractants, like noradrenaline, phenylephrine, U46, anything. You know? And what is that condition? You know, sepsis, sepsis, uh, you know, the bacterial system, bacterial infection, and there is a release of bacterial toxins. Uh, basically, it may not be always the, you know, infection origin, but there will be, you know, severe systemic inflammation. There will be cytokine storm, production of nitric oxide by, you know, by, by manifold induction of inducible nitric oxide. And there is extensive, you know, extra vaccination of fluid, so severe fall in blood pressure, hypotension. And in that case, to compensate our systems, they produce a surge of noradrenaline so that there is a good amount of vasoconstriction and the blood pressure is best. But it, you know, when the tissue is under sustained, uh, um, you know, norepinephrine stimulation, the, the tissue then become insensitive. So this is what is called vascular hyperreactivity. 
the blood vessels which were earlier responding to noradrenaline now is not responding even in the covid situations you know we, uh, you know there is cytokine storm you know, even in hypotension and vascular non responsiveness was even also observed because mm-hmm. you know there was cytokine storm and the production of uh, inflammatory uh, mediators like nit- even nitric oxide <coughs> okay sorry so uh, we in, in our experimental conditions we induce sepsis through that gold standard method surgical you know uh, some surgical model that is a sickle you know just uh, anesthesia and then open the abdomen have the you know extrusize the intestine uh, so you know uh, either ligate the cecum and puncture okay and then reintroduce it after 15 hours you get the de- iota dissected and then you, you can study in the other part and, and I'll, I'll come to the observations actually in this model the animals you know after after some hours uh, suppose after two hours they generally recover from the anesthesia and then gradually there will be you know initially there will be fever conjunctivitis and the diarrhea and then again the hyperthermia will be followed by hypothermia and the animal generally die around 15 hours okay so this is what is happening and then you can see the tissue okay so this is a control mice iota and the same mice iota same operator you know even in case of clp you know sickle ligation and puncture the high k response diminished so the noradrenaline response also significantly diminished the calcium response the function of the calcium you know in the vascular hyperactivity the non responsiveness uh, to noradrenaline is also where the calcium channel also plays an important role shambhav am i audible and is the things fine yeah okay. yeah 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 okay so this is what is happening now so in that situations we have studied you know a series of battery of compounds we were, you know although it is 11 but it is more than 25 so they are actually you know uh, naphthoquinone class of molecules naphthoquinones they are one of the again many important compounds and even i think many of you know about the plumbazine you know plumbazine it is even in clinical trial in china although it is it, it you are, they you know they have a dual behavior at higher concentration they are antioxidant at lower concentration they are prooxidant a wonderful anti cancer compounds and they have antibacterial anti you know uh, you will be wondering why you have chosen this class of compound for studying in sepsis because these compounds they have the history of potent anti inflammatory activity and at the same time a decent antimicrobial activity now you see if a molecule having inbuilt anti inflammatory activity and a decent antimicrobial activity if you can have those molecules for some activity against you know uh, you know vascular hyperactivity then what could be the another end you never need combination of two three molecules because your natural molecules have all these activities so this was the idea of choosing this class of compounds and then we screened whether the compounds can enhance the contractility to norepinephrine okay you can see this in clp the norepinephrine response very significantly diminished and we we screened the molecules whether any stuff can enhance the contractile response okay so we have picked the lt9 this is showing it is increasing the maximum amount of contractions if you see that it in increase the noradrenaline response to nearly fourfold when pre incubated the aortic ring for about 20 minutes okay this is a concentration response curve so we picked up the lt9 and then again the concentration response at different level 1 3 10 micromol this is the concentration dependent enhancement of the contractile response to norepinephrine and also now And the question is how the vascular hyperactivity is there and then how you know how the compound can work as you, as, as i told earlier that you know in sepsis condition due to the hypotension there is continuous adrenaline surge norepinephrine surge now these adrenergic receptors now they are under continuous stimulation of you know uh, this uh, noradrenaline in that case you know inhibitory component has to be there otherwise all the energy will be ex- in that case g protein receptor you know g protein receptor coupled kinase we called grk grk so they become activated and then they actually helps in the internalization of the receptors and desensitization and also the vtcc response is also diminished so the um, these uh, grk to be associated you know decrease in the normal you know adrenergic receptor function and the calcium channel hyperactivity is also there so we wanted whether the lt9 Uh, mediate you know lt as i shown in the earlier slide the lt9 enhances reverses the vascular hyperactivity and enhances the contractile response to noradrenaline whether calcium channel is playing in this role or not that has been studied okay now you can see this calcium channel function okay so that is being enhanced 
in the SAM mice and so also in the CLP mice. In CLP, you see the calcium channel function is almost abolished in the aortic preparations. So this has been reversed by the LD9 treatment and, and was further verified by the Bay response. I'm not exploring those things because in the earlier slide I have explained. So this experiment, this uh, you know calcium channel opening, okay, in the you know you know in this antihypertensive case we we explored whether it is blocking, but in case of this hyperactivity we uh, you know. We studied whether our phy phytomolecules is actually opening the calcium channels or not. Just a nutshell, how you know pro four uh, assay works basically. Okay, so pro four you know uh, this uh, fluorescent dye is there. Just you have to use an inhibitor and pro like pro acid so that the dye is not uh, you know uh, not pumped out of the cells. Now if if calcium is there, that will bind and that will fluoresce. Okay, so if you see our compounds, okay, so LT nine produces you know. Uh, it line produces some kind of fluorescence as good as norepinephrine. And when you use it in combination with nor noradrenaline, you see significant lights. And it is as good as a calcium ion 4 a 2 3 one 8, 7. Okay. So the compound is producing, you know, uh, um, uh, producing enhancement of noradrenergic response through rise in intracellular calcium. Now, after this, we studied the, we evaluated the compound in CLP models. You know, we have, you know, just uh, pre dosed the animal at 50 and 100 mg per kg for 15 days. And then we have induced the surgical model of sepsis. You can see the, you know, survival time has been enhanced from 15 hours to more than 35 hours. And also there is significant improvement, you know, systolic, diastolic, mean arterial pressure. And these are all, all by non invasive technique. And then there is even improvement in the QT. Uh, you know QR, uh, QRS complex and PR, you know PR. Uh, so these are the ECG parameters, and also this compound helps in reducing the microbial load in the splenic tissue. Okay. So this all has been happened. After that, we studied the different you know expression of uh, different um, um, genes like CD4, TLR, MIRK, NF kappa B, you know inflammatory uh, cytokines at uh, gene level and protein level. Adrenergic receptor, you know, adrenergic receptors, there will be generally uh, decrease in the expression, so they is increased. Okay, so and and the pattern of the gene expression has been corrected. And uh, I think uh, um, last week only the paper was um, accepted and published in European Journal of Pharmacology. Mm -hmm. Now and then uh, there are some stories. Uh, this is with the chloroquine for you know calcium channel modulation function, and then uh, synthetic scopolatin. We have also some other couple of observations. I am not sharing that. So uh, this is in nutshell some of that. And if I can summarize, CBDs are single largest global health burden with greater impact in post-COVID era. Ion channels, especially the potassium and calcium ion channels, a important role in cardiovascular system. Both potassium and calcium channels are targets of many clinical antihypertensive anti anti agents. Medicinal plants are serving as a source of pharmacophores since the dawn of civilization. And you can see that uh, these two channels are important targets for a couple of compounds. So actually, uh, research on medicinal plant-derived molecules needs dedicated attention and support for you know for development of uh, affordable pharmacopoe because the plant products why i'm emphasizing one again and again because of their multivalent uh, you know biological activity uh, if we can accommodate in a clinical settings that, that will do wonderful things because we can uh, we don't need too many things uh, to be given because if the compound is coupled and you know this plant compounds are even always better tolerated by the you know biological system although it is not always safe but it is better tolerated so this is all about my presentation and then I'll be happy to have some questions and clarification. Dr. Uh, Shambhu, please. Yeah. yeah, may I now request our respected chairperson, sirs, to please moderate the session. So may I request Professor Shurita Pal, Madam, and Professor Tapon Mondol, sir, to please uh, moderate the question and answer session. I think, sir, we cannot hear you, sir. I think your sound is. No, you are muted.
मैडम आर यू देयर मैडम प्रोफेसर सुरिदा पाल मैडम हेलो या नाउ वी कैन हियर यू सर हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर संभव yeah okay, we can okay. hear you sir oh uh, uh, thank you dr devab boto for your excellent presentation i think our pgt and post graduate students will be benefited from your lecture so if you have any questions so you may ask uh, i want to dr surita pal to say something about the presentation <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, the host was not allowing us to unmute ourselves. I was there throughout. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra, for your excellent presentation. It is so very encouraging for our faculty, students, and research uh, scholars also. And if anybody has any question, is there any question in the chat box? I'll just uh, go through that. Shambhu, is there any question in the chat box? Can you go through that and tell us? Yes, madam. Ah. Uh... I think there, there is, is one question. Uh, by Dr. Kautu Kumar Shardar, uh, he had mentioned like that wonderful presentation, extremely insightful and illustrative. I trust you are using own derived deri own derived compound while preparing working solutions to introduce vaso relaxation. So in that case, we need to consider the molecular weight of the. particular compound how you decide the molecular weight of plant molecule that you study and how the different concentration of wor working solutions are prepared for further study in organ bar the dr chandra will you please answer yeah yeah actually you know we we work in collaboration with chemist so our chemist colleague they are well aware what is the molecular weight we always prepare the molecular weight and the solubility part is taken care of by them okay uh, we, we can use dmetho ethanol and uh, many other stuff to prepare the solution mm -hmm. and uh, because you know our chemistry uh, colleague are there we have you know nmr and every 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 stuff are there so so whatever whatever compounds you are describing they are chemically characterized their structures has been elucidated using nmr and other you know chemistry approach and we know that exactly the precise molecular weight so based on that you know organ but without uh, proper um, solution strength of the solution you cannot study yeah it is there the molecules uh, for which we have shared the data i think all of them are soluble in dms dimethyl sulfoxide yeah any more questions shambo no madam i don't uh, see any more question so if anyone want to uh, ask sir so you may unmute yourself rovinda hello rovinda uh, hello have you any question uh, yes, yes sir uh, 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 now one thing uh, i am very happy to see that uh, in the dose response card am i audible yes sir yes yes, yes. Uh, in the dose response card After yes, a long yes. after a long time, I could see the cumulative dose response curve. Am I correct, Doctor Chandra? You have taken cumulative dose response curve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. They are yeah, they are cumulative. You have uh, add-on concentration. Yeah, uh, because uh, very uh, nowadays cumulative dose response curve is very rare. I used to do this thing during my stay at medical college from ninety <laughs> to two thousand. Yeah. This cumulative dose response curve. But after that, I have never seen to see. Though I am very happy to see, so uh, my postgraduate should see that this is called cumulative dose response curve. Uh, another thing I like to add that uh, what you have done in the plant study, then actually chemical molecule to be found out, and we should to start in that way so that ultimately it come into medical practice. because i worked with so many indigenous plant the point is i could not find out the actual chemical formula and which one is responsible for the actual benefit and by that a many of the research work go waste so i hope you will go yeah, further yeah, yeah. in csir and so that you can find out and come into practice thank yes, you sir. thank you sir actually uh, working in this area you know 
you need a very strong collaboration with chemist without very, them, de yeah, all, all all these work what have been described they are with the pure molecules they are being uh, isolated and purified and i am because you know because of the ipr issue i am not able to share here we are doing in collaboration with king george medical university some of the work where cmap cdri and these people uh, kgmc people we are working together and those works are going on and I, but you know is it needs lot of funding and the process is very long i i don't need to explain you sir you know that how long uh, the process is but but we made some interesting process and uh, you know this recent advent of the you know phytopharma guidelines and other things you know they make it they have given at least some scope it is not as stringent as dcdi dcgi route so that some some you know uh, some hope is there that some some stuff from plant source should come uh, for you know uh, this yeah that should be the ideal way uh, yeah. to develop yeah So all this work should not be helpful without the active support from my students. Uh, you know, Sarita, Swetha, Poonam, Kamalji, Arjun, Divya, Hina, Pankos. They are actually the workforce. All the PhD scholars, some of them completed their uh, doctoral uh, work. So they are the active uh, workforce uh, behind this work and the funding agencies. This is all. Yeah, Tavanda, please. Uh, once again, we are thankful to Dr. Devboto Chando on behalf of IPS West Bengal branch. Now, Dr. Sambo, you conclude. May I request uh, first uh, Professor Shurita Pal, Madam, to say some uh, remarks, then we'll. Yeah, that's what I was saying, that it's a very good effort. First of all, definitely, we really need to thank. Uh, Dr. Chanda for his excellent deliberation and we hope to see much more of these in your future Shambo grade going. Uh, I definitely should uh, congratulate you also and thank you for taking the initiative and every at least once a month, one Sunday evening we can spend some quality time together with some academic endeavor. So please try and maintain this in regularity. And hopefully next one could be offline, which was pending. We could see each other uh, in uh, real uh, thing also, other than the virtual platform, maybe in the offline mode. Because what it seems, maybe end of February, in March, I think we can be able, we should be able to meet in person. So let us be hopeful. And uh, I think that should be all for today. Thank you, madam. Thank you once again. So, from the uh, IPS, Indian Pharmacological Society West Bengal chapter, we are really thankful to Dr. Devagroto Chando for giving us his precious time and to teach us a very important aspect of drug development. And we, we are really thankful to our chairperson, Professor Tapon Mondol, sir, and Professor Shurita Pal, madam, for giving us their valuable time. And I am personally thankful to Professor Rovindranath Chattopadhyay sir also for uh, for his active participation in this academic phase. So with that, I once again I thank all the attendees, and I with your permission, Professor Chandu Chando sir, uh, do, will you par permit us to uh, give this recorded version of this presentation to all the IPS members? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I also take this opportunity uh, to uh, for my appeal that uh, we'll be happy, you know, if, if there is some collaboration can go in, uh, move on. So that will be the add-on. You know, add uh, yes, sir, sir. We actually want to look forward regarding some clinical studies. With the next step, so we can contact with you <laughs> later. Excuse on. Excuse so, so once again, thank you all. So may I request now to our technical team to please start the national anthem. So as the 23rd January, we will end our program with national anthem. So may I request all the delegates to please stand up uh, for the national anthem. Thank you. You have to stop the screen share. They will put it on the side. Yeah. Okay, sir.
i think sound is not coming uh, please technical team please start with uh, again with the sounds जनगण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा बिंद हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे thank you thank you all thank you so good night to all of you so we are now thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you. once again thank you, thank you professor devprabhu chandu thank you thank you thank you, thank you.